An 83-year-old man has become the oldest person ever to hike the Appalachian Trail. The man dedicated the walk to his wife, who died a few miles back. <laughs> that is Michael Che hosting Weekend Update on last night's new episode of Saturday Night Live. This season marks Che's eighth as co-anchor of Weekend Update alongside his buddy Colin Jost. It was Jost who spotted Che at a New York stand-up show in 2013 and asked him if he'd like to come in and write sketches for Saturday Night Live. With hits like Black Jeopardy, Che would become SNL's first black head writer and first black anchor of Weekend Update. His rise to that chair in Studio 8H began from a childhood of poverty in New York and with early jobs selling t-shirts while working open mic nights. Michael took a break during this busy SNL week to join me in his old neighborhood for a Sunday sit down. So, Michael, does this neighborhood look and feel the way at all it did when you were growing up? It's so crazy looking at the walls. It's like, like that graffiti's probably been up there for 40 years, you know what I mean? Yeah. Michael Che has lived an extraordinary New York story that's taken him from Manhattan's Lower East Side to a famous studio just a few miles north. It's Weekend Update with Colin Jost and Michael Che. The New Jersey Senate president lost his re-election bid in an upset to a truck driver named Edward Durr. Coincidentally, Durr is also the New Jersey state motto. Do you allow yourselves the moment ever of, I grew up here, it's where I came from, and now I'm going to drive up to Midtown, get in an elevator, and go be the head writer and one of the biggest stars on Saturday Night Live? It doesn't make sense. It's dumb luck. It has been much more than dumb luck, of course, that has kept the 38-year-old Che at Saturday Night Live for nine seasons, first as a writer, then a cast member, and now as co-head writer. And tonight you're pitching ideas, meeting the hosts, yeah. do all those things. I don't like meeting the hosts, though. Oh, really? No, no, I don't like famous people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm pleasantly surprised every time, but I don't like meeting the hosts. <laughs> I kind of but don't you have to as the co-head writer? Yeah, that's why his job sucks. <laughs> no, no. As <laughs> no, is like, it's like a celebrity's wedding. This is all the things they've wanted to do and wanted to see, and they're excited about it. So, you know, we try to be respectful and, and considerate of that and can't just tell somebody, hey, this ain't funny, rich guy. Somewhere around the halfway mark of the show, the host disappears. And the floor belongs to Che and his friend Colin Jost, who have co-anchored Weekend Update together since 2014. Wow. So this is SNL. <laughs> what did those early days feel like? Hell, man, it was horrible. Really? Man. Well, I have like a stepdad theory that when you're, when you're replacing someone that America loves, like Seth or, you know, Tina and Amy, they're always like, where's the other guy? We like the other guy. Right. And I remember we would try to write things early on for each other where we would, where we would be on camera at the same time and Lauren would be like, stop writing chemistry. The chemistry has to be natural. And I never understood mm -hmm. what he meant by that until like, we figured it out. We're making each other read jokes live on air that the other person has never seen before. <laughs> so we had to kind of find little moments to poke fun at each other. Human activity is disrupting chimpanzee culture. Incidentally, chimpanzee culture is also what my grandpa calls hip hop. Why? <laughs> I wouldn't have said that. I've just kind of always been the person that processed things through humor, you know, and sometimes it's tricky because people think if you find something funny, you don't really respect it or you don't think it's important. But for me, it's how I process the worst things in my life is through making fun of it. The youngest of seven children, Che was raised by his single mother in public housing. He later attended the prestigious LaGuardia High School of Music and Performing Arts. In high school, Jerry Seinfeld came and it was like exciting. He was probably the biggest comedian in the world at that point. Sure. And, uh, we were hanging out in the cafeteria, me and my friends, and, and one, another friend came over and he goes, Jerry Seinfeld's on the third floor. And uh, one of my buddies was like, so? Chase funnier than him. I'm not. But 
it made me feel like I was for like two seconds. And I was like, oh, they think I'm funny. That was the first time I ever thought people looked at me as funny. But a career in comedy still was years away. After graduating, Che designed and sold T-shirts out of the trunk of his car. Is the story true that you were so good that Spike Lee and Tommy Hilfiger's son saw your stuff? Tommy Hilfiger invites you in, takes you around the office, offers you a job, and you said, no thanks? <laughs> it's pretty true, yeah. Really? Well, it's not that I said no thanks. I just stiffed him. He, <laughs> he, paid, me, <laughs> he paid me in cash the first day, <laughs> and then I just stopped going because I, I was intimidated. I always said, like, if I had a decent job, I would have never even tried comedy because I would have been afraid to jeopardize something that I don't even really want. You know what I mean? Right. Comedy has turned out to be a pretty decent job for Che. Outside of Saturday Night Live, he is a successful touring stand-up comedian. I'm reaching for the potatoes. Out soon with a new Netflix special called Michael Che, Shame the Devil. I feel American until I'm around something very American, and then I'm like, I don't like this. You're so effortless in your delivery that it almost looks like you're making it up as you go, which is a tribute to you. Uh, it's it a very nice like, compliment, you're like, But that takes, I have to imagine, a lot of thought and a lot of practice. I don't really write jokes out, so... Um, and I don't really listen to myself recording it, so I kind of am coming up with it as it is coming out. Really? Yeah. Even for a Netflix stand-up special, you're just flowing? Yeah, that's just kind of the process. Wow. Like, I know the joke, but I was, but more so I know why I think it's funny. Right. And once I know why it's funny, then I can tell it any way I want. When I hear the national anthem, you know what it feels like? It feels like I'm listening to R. Kelly now. <laughs> It's just hard to not think about that other thing. Doing <laughs> standards, it's become, it's become important. But I blame comedians for that. What do you mean? I think at some point, we were always just funny. And then people started telling us we were brilliant. Mm. And I think we're, we're losing the plot. We're there to have fun and get people's mind off of serious things, or at least not be afraid of it. So I try to, I try to not take myself too seriously. Is that controversial? <laughs> Michael's new stand-up special, Michael Che, Shame the Devil, begins streaming this Tuesday on Netflix. And, of course, you can see him every weekend on Saturday Night Live right here on NBC. Our thanks to The Flower Shop on the Lower East Side of Manhattan for hosting our conversation. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit-Down podcast to hear the full-length interview with Michael Che. You can find it on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.